ball were visible lights. They're all result of electrons dropping from higher energy level to second energy level, as we said before. Okay. Let's see if we can explain these. Let's see if we can explain energy of these photons. Suppose we call the energy level, which is lower energy level, which is final point where electron drops, drop, E final. And this is higher energy level, initial level, but electron is in excited state and electron is falling down from EI initial to EF. And use the formula developed by Bohr. What sort of photon are we going to get? What is the energy of a photon which results from dropping of second energy level to the first? Remember this formula, which had right belt constant, right belt constant shows energy of any principal quantum number level. Principal energy level is defined by this formula, right? Right belt constant is a constant. N is the principal quantum number. If I'm talking about the electrons dropping from second level to first level, so N is equal to two. I'm sorry, let me explain again. This is an F, this is where electron is going to drop two. So NF is equal to one. That's what we are going to study. So how much is the energy of electron before dropping? It's on second energy level principal quantum number equal to two. So once electron is dropping, the difference between the two energy levels should give me energy of the photon which is emitted. Let's take factor out RH, you multiply inside by negative and do you see one over an I squared minus one over an F squared. And we know here N is equal to initial energy is two dropping to N equal to one, right? In this particular case. And if an electron dropping from the third energy level to first energy level, all you have to do change the value of principal quantum number, change the value of N, I and NF. The same thing, some electrons are dropping from third to second, then your NF is two and NI where electrons are dropping from is three. The value of RH right back constant is 2.18 times 10 to minus 18 Joule. This is the type of calculation that you need to understand to do for your next lab. And wavelength of the photon or frequency of a photon is related to the energy. This energy is the energy of photon, which is equal to the energy which is released by electrons dropping from higher energy level to lower energy level. Now, when you are doing your lab, instead of and I, in your lab, you are using M. That's M is the level that electrons are dropping to and NF, you're in your lab, you are using N. So the formula that you are going to use in your lab is M showing where principal quantum number of the energy level that electrons are dropping from. And this is where 
electrons are dropping too. And if I use this formula that energy is equal to Planck constant times the speed of light over the lambda. So now I have changed my formula in terms of the wavelengths because wavelengths of energy are related, of course, by this formula. So now you can calculate the wavelengths of each line of hydrogen. If you know the transition between the two energy levels or vice versa. I hope you are not getting headache. Are you getting dizzy? If you are, make sure to come to my office hour and lap time. I can explain this to you one-to-one. -one. So, because this constant is now combined with this constant, speed of light and Planck constant, so this constant is not changing, is now changing, it's R. And R and RH are different because energy and one over lambda are different, but they are related. So the value of constant in this formula, in this current formula, R is different from right bell constant. It's 1.097 times 10 to minus two nanometer. That means it will calculate the wavelength of the emitted light in nanometer. All right. So now we wanna know scientists is after 1930 and they are trying to understand why energy is quantized. Why electrons cannot accept any arbitrary amount of energy. Why they are certain package of energy they can accept. So the same concept which was used to explain electromagnetic radiation is used by de Broglie. De Broglie says electrons are not particles like planets which are orbiting around sun. Electrons are, behave as if they are wave as well. So we can only define properties of electron just like properties of light. If we assume that they are particle and wave at the same time, particle and waves at the same time. In fact, he's saying that matter behave differently when we are not looking at matter. When we look at matter, it has certain behavior. When we don't look at it, it has another behavior. When we look at electrons and when we did the measurement, electrons behave like a wave. When we are not looking at them, they behave like particles. Not understandable to you or me or anybody else, but it's working, it's a model. That's what quantum physics is saying that. That's how the cell phone and computer technology is so useful. It was actually built on this theory of quantum physics. If you are interested, if you come to my office, I'll show you how electron behave differently when you are measuring it, when you are react, when you are looking at it. Matters does the same thing. So de Broglie is saying that any particle, any moving particle also has a wave associated with it. And he says, I can actually calculate the wavelength of any moving particle. He says any particle which is moving <clears throat> with mass <clears throat> of M, velocity of V, has got a wavelength associated with it. And that wavelength can be calculated by dividing Planck's constant, which is this, over the mass, over the velocity. And this picture is showing 
wave and particle behavior of electrons. Particle behavior and wave behavior. Quantum mechanics says electrons come to existence and they are, they disappear and come back to this, to the existence. They come and go into existence. Amazing things. So in this formula, as I said, V is velocity. And M is mass of electrons and wavelength of electrons can be calculated. 